Hello everybody, this is the second in a series of 10 relatively short videos in this little series, uh, 10 Reasons Why Cessationism is Wrong. And it's just simply my attempt to explain why I disagree with cessationism and why I believe that the gifts of the Spirit, in particular the apparently miraculous gifts of the Spirit, uh, are valid and continue for today. I, I use that phrase, I'm going to use it a lot through this series, apparently miraculous. Because I believe that there's something miraculous in every work of the Spirit of God. It's just sometimes the miraculous nature of the Holy Spirit's work is sometimes more apparent than others. So when I use that phrase, apparently miraculous, uh, don't think that I'm trying to say it's not really miraculous, it just appears to be so. I'm saying that it is miraculous and it does have the appearance. It's, it's obviously, in some sense, miraculous. And so today I want to get to the second reason out of the 10 why I believe cessationism is wrong. And here's how I would summarize it. I would say simply this, cessationism is wrong because there's no biblical statement that any of the gifts of the Spirit have passed away. Now, that's my second of the 10. The first of the 10 was in the previous video where I said that cessationism is wrong because the miraculous gifts of the Spirit are a part of the promise that was made to all generations in the sermon that Peter preached in Acts chapter 2, special emphasis on verses 33 and 39, that which they saw and heard there uh, on Pentecost, that was a promise made to all generations, that those things would, at least in some form, in some measure, be present among the people of God as a fulfillment of the new covenant promises. That was number one. Here's number two again. Cessationism is wrong because there's no biblical statement that any of the gifts of the Spirit have passed away. To put it simply, the Scriptures nowhere say that the gifts of the Spirit have passed away for God's people in the present age that is, before the glorious return of Jesus Christ. Now, there is one passage of Scripture that at times cessationists have pointed towards to say, no, 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 no. The Scriptures actually say that some of the gifts of the Spirit will pass away in this present age. The passage they point to is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 8, 9, and 10. We're going to take a look at that, and I'm just going to tell you that, that I believe that to claim that 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 8, 9, and 10 says that all or some of the apparently miraculous gifts of the Spirit will pass away in this present age is a profoundly wrong understanding of the text. So let's take a look at this passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, starting at verse 8. Uh, the Apostle Paul, obviously writing by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says this, Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. Here, of course, you have to appreciate Yes, in some sense, the brilliance of the human penman that God used, the Apostle Paul. But then there's just also, obviously, the, the, the brilliance, the majesty of the Spirit of God speaking in an inspired sense through Paul, the inspired penman at this point. Where Paul makes the case in 1 Corinthians chapter 13... Sandwich right there in between two chapters that speak more about spiritual gifts than any other chapters in the Bible, any other books of the Bible. He has this majestic chapter on love. And he says here in verse 8, love never fails. Paul was addressing the overemphasis that the Corinthian Christians had on the manifested gifts of the Spirit. They were so interested in these manifested gifts of the Spirit, so interested in tongues, so interested in what they thought was prophecy, so interested in perhaps working in miracles, whatever it might be. They were so interested on that that they had somehow neglected love. And Paul shows how the Corinthian Christians and every believer, us today, 
how we should focus more on love than the gifts, that we should uh, give more more attention to love than the gifts, because, and this is his argument in verses 8, 9, and 10 here in 1 Corinthians 13, the gifts are temporary containers of God's work, but love is the work itself. Therefore, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are a appropriate for this present age, but they're not permanent. They are imperfect gifts for an imperfect time. But verse 10 says, but when that which is perfect has come. Paul says that when that which is perfect has come, then the gifts will be discontinued. Now, Christians have debated, what is that which is perfect? Some people say that it was the lives of the apostles, which would be kind of a funny thing to claim, because if anything you know about the apostles of Jesus Christ, both during the Gospels uh, narrative, the history recorded in the Gospels, and the history recorded in the book of Acts, and what we know from church history outside of that, those apostles were not perfect. So, the apostles weren't perfect. The completion of the New Testament canon, some people say that that was perfection. The majority of Bible commentators agree, not not all by any means, but I, I think a majority agree that that which is perfect is fulfilled when we are in the eternal presence of the perfect one, when God's people are with the Lord forever, either through the return of Jesus Christ or their graduation to the realm of the eternal. That biblical Greek word for perfect is telos. And considering the way that the New Testament uses telos in other passages, especially other passages in 1 Corinthians, it certainly seems to be speaking about the coming of Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8, again, the same book, the same letter, uh, epistle in the New Testament, Paul wrote this, 1 Corinthians 1, 8, who will also confirm you to the end, that's the word telos, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, there he's talking about the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, the consummation of all things. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24, Paul wrote this, Then comes the end, the telos, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and all power. Uh, Again, a, a reference to the consummation of all things in the glorious second coming of Jesus. That defines that which is perfect. That which is perfect has not yet come, and so the gifts are valid until that which is perfect comes. Now, with his eye on that ultimate consummation of the glorious return of Jesus Christ, that's why Paul can say in verse 8, whether there are tongues, they will cease. Now, many of those who believe that the more apparently miraculous gifts of the Spirit ended with the apostles, uh, John MacArthur would be one example of this, they claim that since the verb here, will cease, is not in the passive voice, but it is in the middle voice. They claim that this could be translated, tongues will stop by themselves. Look, I've done the reading, at least to my satisfaction. That's an analysis that sounds scholarly, but to my reading, it's disregarded by virtually all scholars of the biblical Greek language, ancient Koine Greek. Again, I'm not an authority on biblical Greek, so I I can't give an authoritative statement myself, but, but I know how to read the people who I think are respected and authoritative. And it's just not a proper translation. It does not say here that tongues will stop by themselves. But even if that translation was correct, now I don't think it is, but even if it was, it would do nothing to suggest when tongues will cease. In other words, if tongues will stop by themselves, when? Now, John MacArthur claims, and again, this is from his book, uh, The Charismatics. It's a much older book, man, written in the 1980s, probably, that John MacArthur wrote against the charismatic movement before his book and conference and whatever strange fire was his book, The Charismatics. And in that book, John MacArthur claimed 
tongues ceased in the apostolic age, and when they stopped, they stopped for good. But again, this passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, does not tell us that tongues will stop by themselves. It tells us that tongues will cease only, verse 10, when that which is perfect has come. Matter of fact, John Calvin himself thought that the end looked forward to, the end mentioned by tongues will cease, spoke of the eternal state. To quote John Calvin in his commentary on 1 Corinthians, he says, But when will that perfection come? It begins indeed at death, because then we put off many weaknesses along with the body. So, John Calvin didn't argue that the consummation was uh, the finishing of the New Testament, or the coming together of that, or, or, any, or the death of the apostles, or anything like that. He said it was the graduation to the eternal state. So, Paul just simply says, where there are tongues, they will cease. And he repeats the phrase, applying it to different gifts, to prophecy, to knowledge. And in his use of will fail, and will cease, and will vanish away, Paul, obviously writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is not trying to say that prophecies, tongues, and knowledge all have different fates. He's simply writing well. He's saying the same thing in three different ways. All of those things will end. There will come an end for the gift of tongues. There will come an end for prophecies. There will come an end for the gift of knowledge. But love never fails. Let me read you a quote from a respected commentator, Kistemacher, who says this, quote, there is virtually no distinction between the two Greek verbs that describe the termination of both prophecies and tongues. True, the verb with prophecies is in the passive voice, believers are the implied agents, while the verb with tongues is interpreted in the active voice. The difference is only a stylistic change and nothing more. Now, to my knowledge, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 8, 9, and 10 is the only passage that cessationists claim states that the gifts of the Holy Spirit, or some of those gifts, will pass away. They make arguments in other ways. We'll talk about those arguments in some of our further points. But as far as being a positive statement that the New Testament makes, saying these gifts will not remain, uh, these gifts will be taken away from the church, so to speak, the only passage, to my knowledge, and friends, listen, we love your feedback. <laughs> if you want to leave a comment, if you want to that, we, we love your feedback. We may not be able to engage with all of it, but we love your feedback. I'm just saying, to my knowledge, this is the only passage that cessationists would say, they, they make the claim that it says that the gifts of the Holy Spirit or some of those gifts will pass away. But I'll be very frank with you. I don't hear a lot of cessationists rely on these 1 Corinthians 13 verses 8 through 10 arguments anymore. Now, that was pretty big in John MacArthur's old book, The Charismatics. But at least I don't hear much of it today. Maybe it's because they realize that there's really no case for it there in that passage. To put it plainly, 1 Corinthians 13 verses 8, 9, and 10 does not say what at least some cessationists claim it says. There is no statement in the Bible telling us that all or some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit would cease in New Testament times and not be for God's church as it endures in its work throughout the end until things culminate in the glorious second coming of Jesus Christ. So friends, that's my second of 10 reasons why I believe cessationism wrong. Again, we invite your comments, your feedback. You may not be able to respond to every comment or get involved in every discussion, but we invite your response and uh, hang on because I'm just done with number two of 10. We'll get on to the further ones in good time.